evening once again. And so, um, to continue clarifying some things, um, 22 years ago, um, I, d despite my um, conservative uh, experience, conservative, uh, despite the conservative message that accompanied my sojourn, so a lot of body, um, actually, yeah, that was, it was the second experience, so. Um, despite that conservative message which accompanied my sojourn and however grim it was, I, um, 22 years ago, couldn't help but wonder why the Lord, um, my divine providence, wasn't um, guarding the message that was so um, obviously imperative that he would, you know, flex his muscles in this way with me. So it was a conservative Roman Catholic message um, pointing to that old dogma. Outside the church, there is no salvation. Now, you know, what is Christ's church? That's... That's what begs the question here. Pope Benedict says that the Church of Christ is within the Catholic Church. Um, and that would, that would seem true, that you would have to be worthy of canonization to be, um, or, or to be at least saved and, and receive the promise of eternal salvation um, after passing away to be uh, the mystical body, the legitimate mystical body of Christ. Before then, we are only church militant, if we are that, you know. So we basically have to be in the state of grace to be the, the legitimate mystical body of Christ. Otherwise, we are still candidates for redemption. So in that sense, we're redeemed by a wish that God made, he, by his hope that, that he elevates for us. So that by our, we have the full potential to be redeemed and we are therefore redeemed because Jesus did that act um, 2,000 years ago. But 22 years ago, I was questioning how, you know, d you know, despite the conservative message and because of the conservative message both, how is it that, um, that God the Father was the same God uh, or had the same heart? Uh, when his will seemed so much different, where he allowed, you know, the kings of the Old Testament to be polyamorous. And then Jesus comes in the New Testament and says, you know, that, um, you know, it just, you know, enforces the, the monogamy. And uh, it, it really enforces the, the monogamy and, and makes a ca big case of that. And so here I was thinking that, you know, that my neighbors thought more of me than they did because of my experiences or because of my long-lived evangelistic crusade. And um, he had put, or it was believed, that he had put one of his neighbors up to um, daring to be with me. And so I was trying to make sense of his polyamorous lifestyle and why God was permitting it and why God was permitting so much presumption um, with, you know, in the hearts of men toward me and in their behaviors. And so, um, yeah, so anyway, so I was, uh, I had been triangulated by this neighbor um, uh, with the use of his, his friend. And it's not the first time he's done something like this. So it was just, it was out of the blue 25 years later. And, um, so here I, I'm like trying to process this with them and they turned the whole town against me for like five years. And so, um, what's his name? Oh gosh, you know what? I don't know his name. Narc survivor. I think his first name is Tim. Uh, talked about gang stalking, and that was pretty much what it was. What was going on for like five years, gang stalking, and then to describe it to anybody because I got myself in trouble, you know, nearly arrested for for reacting 
to this um, than to, you know, to try to describe what was happening to me. You know, they don't, they just look at you like you're crazy. They don't believe anything you say. When you try to describe what the narc survivor um, describes and, um, you know, I was, after a while I was writing the news, I said, after five years of it, I said, this is going to stop. So I was writing the news and sure enough, it stopped. So. But, um, yeah, so for somebody that's just, you know, dreaming things and it's all in my head and all, but, um, yeah, it stopped after I started writing the news. So. Um, anyway, um, uh, so that's some of my autobiographical. I watch, um, I video binge on, on narcissistic abuse around the clock. Um, because it seems like my life is plagued with it. Um, and I don't know how Narc Survivor overcame it, but um, I wish I could overcome it with prayer because I have been doing a lot of it. <laughs>